Space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. It's 10 year mission to explore strange new levels, to seek out music notes and golden jiggies, to boldly go where no bear has gone bear for. And that's enough of that intro, otherwise we're going to get a copyright strike. Captain's Log, 12th of October 2016. As part of the first build challenge, I'd been asked to construct the USS Enterprise. As a huge fan of Star Trek, I was very excited by the request. Although, on the other hand, as someone who's tried to build the Enterprise in Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts once before, and failed miserably, I was slightly worried about the challenge. If you're just here to copy the vehicle, there should be a link on the screen right now which will take you to the end of the video where there'll be a layer by layer reconstruction of the vehicle that should be easy enough to follow. Or if you want to watch the entire building process in total, there'll be a link to the Grim Builds the Enterprise video in the description. But I digress. Because of my previous attempt to build the Enterprise, I entered this project with the knowledge of two things. Firstly, the dish shape will be a pain in the ass to achieve, because it's a dish shape, and dish shapes are hard to achieve when all you've got available to you are squares. You can of course use the wedge blocks, but the light wedge block is too straight, so using too many in a row looks, well, like just a square on its side, and the super block wedge block is too rounded, so using too many of those in a row makes it look like a weird wavy line. And secondly, that the Enterprise is deceptively long, so be very careful about the length of your ship so you don't hit the outer parameters before you mean to. It took me quite a few attempts to get the disc shape right, and even now I'm probably going to continue to rework it quite a few times until I'm entirely happy with it, but at least now the ship resembles the Enterprise. And as far as the length goes, I learned from last time that the way to make it look right is by decreasing the width of the engines. In my last attempt to build the Federation's flagships, the engines had blocks surrounding them, which would have in theory helped me add more details to it, but this time I just left them as large jets with a light on the front to project the correct colour, and a little bit of decor to make them look more, well, like the engines. Either way, I ended up sacrificing extra details in order to get the silhouette correct, which I think paid off because really the silhouette of the Enterprise is what makes it look like the Enterprise. Speaking of looking like the Enterprise, this Enterprise was mostly based off of the 1960s original series Star Trek. This is both because I absolutely love the original Star Trek, and also because it's the least detailed Enterprise, so it's the easiest to replicate when you're working with large blocks. As far as functionality goes, there were three main things I really wanted to include in this build. Firstly, I wanted her to be able to actually fly properly, and I achieved this to a degree, but it still doesn't work as well as it should. For the vehicle to handle the way I wanted it to, I had to hide wings somewhere on it, and of course because of the Enterprise being so very skinny, the only place available was the dish, which added even more issues while I was trying to sculpt it. I did manage to eventually fit them in there, but of course the vehicle doesn't handle as well as it should, because really the wings should be more centred functionality speaking, but it would completely ruin the look of the Enterprise if you just stuck them randomly on the ship. As well as actually being able to fly, I felt that there were two other functions that I just had to include in the Enterprise for it to actually resemble the ship. Whenever I build replicas of vehicles in Banjo-Kazooie, I try to have their functionality resemble what they're replicating as closely as the game will allow it. For the Enterprise, aside from actually being able to fly, which I feel like is a pretty basic functionality to replicate, the two things that I couldn't possibly ignore for the Starship is to include a force field and to include a hyperdrive generator. And yes, before you Star Trek nerds get angry at me for using the wrong terminology, while hyperdrive generator is not the correct term for Star Trek, it is the general term used for the glitch in Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, so it was technically correct, so don't get too mad and kindly dispel your angry mob. And regardless, whether you're calling it a warp drive or a hyperdrive generator, the point of it is to make your vehicle go very, very fast. I did run into two problems while installing the glitch on the vehicle, the first of which being that since I haven't played this game in three months, I'm a little bit rusty and despite making a tutorial for the hyperdrive generator, I installed it backwards which was less than helpful when I went to turn it on. And the second of which being that because of the shape of the Enterprise, the only place you can really hide it, aside from the dish section which I've already taken up with my wings and the energy shield, is the middle lower tube. This is not exactly the best place for a warp drive to be installed, and when you turn it on, it kind of gives you a bit of control issue, which is why they put a cargo hold there in the real Enterprise, and not a warp drive. But that's the only space we had available for us, so we're just going to have to deal with it. And as I mentioned, the shield generator, or the energy shield, or whatever the item is called, is hidden in the dish as well as the wings, simply for the reason that it's the only place it fit. Other things hidden within the ship are a couple of small jets, a propeller, a super engine, and a lot of fuel. 
This is because, due to the shape of the ship, as I said, it doesn't fly too well. And on top of that, it has a lot of trouble with lift, what with the large jets being at the top of the ship. I suppose, in retrospect, this makes a lot of sense considering the Enterprise is designed to fly in space, not in the atmosphere. But despite this, once you've added the extra jets and the fan, it flies pretty darn well, and it has plenty of lift. In fact, it has so little trouble with lift that you can even go around collecting whales as if you're in Voyage Home. That is, provided, of course, that your ship doesn't blow up before you can go collecting whales. Hmm. I kind of want to go and make a Klingon bird of prey now, but that's for another time. Either way, that's the Enterprise for you. I'm sure I'll tweak the design as I go, as I always do, but this is it for now. Shout out to TankThief101 who requested this build request, and if you have a build request of your own, feel free to request it. I make no promises of getting to it, but I'll definitely read it at the very least and consider it. That's it for me. Thanks for watching. I have been and still am Grim Grindle, and if you want to see the layer by layer construction of the Enterprise so you can replicate it yourself, continue watching now. And of course, in the spirit of self promotion, if you want to see more, subscribe for more.